make sure that there's no technical difficulties so we're actually going to start ah here we go there's the last name that i remember seeing at the alameda page and that's exactly 5.5 exactly look at that look at that now good good tur good turnout five zero five zero there we go one more um, okay, I'm going to go with the fact that uh, we have majority quorum and uh, we should get going. So I guess welcome to SF Scholar Meetup on this, uh, on this fine day in July, uh, hosted by Mia and Alexi. Alexi, is there anything you want to talk about before we introduce Howie? I just want to say thank you to Salar and, and uh, Howie. Uh, Salar uh, uh, organized this meetup, and uh, I appreciate uh, Howie dialing in from the faraway uh, mysterious Singapore. Uh, thanks to this uh, times. On the other, one hand, we cannot meet physically, but on the other hand, we can have our favorite host uh, speakers from around the world. So just welcome everybody and thanks. Hello, take it away as the host. Great, well, um, thank you, Alexi. Uh, welcome to the SF Scholar. Uh, tonight we have uh, Howie doing a talk on getting things done in, in the Scholar REPL. Uh, I was telling Howie when he first joined this call that when I first was exploring whether I should learn Scala or not, and I was trying to learn it, and I knew, didn't know what, what I was doing, the person who actually helped me the most, and that resulted in motivating me to continue to learn Scala, was Howie on Gitter. And on the very first project I developed, I actually used his uh, FastParse uh, library. So it's kind of like a very sentimental, and it, it really gives me great privilege to introduce him as a speaker at SF Scala. Uh, and also, he um, he's written a new book, which I'm hoping to find the time to read. And um, I'm going to let 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 how Howie himself tell you all about that. But uh, please welcome Howie, getting things done in the Scholar Rebel. Uh, thanks, Salar. Um, let me present, and I'll take over yeah. the screen. Yeah. yeah. There um, you go. Here we are, and I'll also record. Uh, here using QuickTime. Cool. Um, so yeah, hi everyone. Um, my name is Howie. This talk is going to be about getting things done the Scala REPL. Um, for those who don't know me, um, I, I'm a developer tools engineer at Databricks. We're heavy users of Scala and a bunch of other related technologies. Um, previously, I was at Dropbox, and I've worked on a lot of open source projects in my spare time, mostly Scala related. So things like the Ammonite REPL. Uh, the mill build tool, fast parse, parsing library, Scala text, HTML, and all those sort of things. Um, I'm curious, for, for those of you who are called in, how many of you have used any of these libraries? You know, leave a comment in the, let's say, the, the Hangout chat. If you're using any of these, like Ammonite, mill, fast parse, Scala text, upickle, requests, and so on. And which, which ones are you using? Upickle, uh, request Scala, Ammonite, Ammonite, Ammonite. It seems that mo most, of, most of the time I ask this question, everyone's using Ammonite, which is good to hear. I, I, I like using Ammonite too. To be honest, I made it for myself, and the fact that it's open source is kind of a nice bonus because I, I use it regularly every day. Um, so what's this talk about? Um, so this talk is going to be about an introduction to doing things in the Ammonite Scala REPL. Um, m most of you probably use Scala for like back-end systems. I think according to the, the, the JetBrains uh, pro programming language survey, 70% of people using Scala use it for back-end services. Um, but this, is, this presentation is going to introduce using Scala for a more like local interactive in, uh, experience where you're using Scala interactively in the REPL, you're putting in small amounts of code, you're seeing the results, and you don't need a big like SDT build tool or a big like Bazel project or Finagle web server in order to get work done. Um, and rather than going through toy examples like reversing a linked list or traversing a binary tree, we, we'll be walking through several real world use cases that you may find Ammonite handy in your day to day work. And these are kinds of use cases that someone might actually pay you a salary for. 
So the three things I'll be covering um, using Ammonite are web scraping. We'll write a small like uh, Wikipedia scraper and uh, Mozilla documentation scraper to pull down semi-structured data of people's websites, whether they want you to or not. Uh, the second thing we'll cover is we'll be writing a small GitHub project migration tool to like copy over issues from one uh, GitHub project to another. Maybe you're changing from GitHub to GitLab, or maybe someone abandoned the project and you want to ex preserve all the metadata. And we'll be using GitHub's uh, public API for that, uh, JSON over HTTP. Uh, the last thing we'll be doing is we will be writing a parallel web crawler. Um, so Scala is known to be good at concurrency. And we'll see what good at concurrency means when we can write a highly parallel um, breadth-first web crawler that grabs Wikip that crawls the graph of Wikipedia articles and that pulls, out, pull, pulls down all the metadata. And we'll do so in a very small amount of relatively simple code. And if all goes well, we'll hopefully get through all of this in the next 40 minutes or so. Um, cool. So let's start off with web scraping. Um, so the so I'm going to open up Ammonite here. Everything's going to be done in the wrapper. I won't have IntelliJ or editor running. Um, the most common library people use for web scraping on a JVM is a JSOUP library. So you can see this at jsoup.org. This is a very old Java library that's been here for a long time. And it it's available at um, it's available at this address. So you can import third-party libraries in Ammonite Scala REPL. So here it says JSOUP version 1.13.1. And this is the full name of the JSOUP library on Maven Central. So using import IV, I can import the library. And then I can import the package from the library. Um, I've already imported it earlier, so you won't see it down load, load, loading anything since it's cached. So once it's loaded in the REPL, I can immediately start using it, just copy and pasting the Java code and tweaking it to make it valid Scala. So this is downloading um, the Wikipedia homepage. Um, I can get the title of the document. I can select the headlines. Um, and in order to loop, this is a Java style collection. So I need to uh, import the Java converters to make it work. Uh, and then after that, I can loop over them just like how the example loops over them in Java. And then I can print line, let's say, headline dot attribute title, headline dot empty URL, href. I mistyped something. New news headlines, there's extra S here. And then I need to add Scala. There we go. So this is a kind of a short example of using the Wikipedia home crawling scraping data from Wikipedia homepage using Ammonite. Ammonite as a Scala REPL does not come bundled with the JSOUP library because most people will not be web scraping. But for the people who do need a JSOUP library, it's a relatively straightforward single line import to just pull it in and immediately start using it interactively. Um, and we can open up the Wikipedia um, homepage right now to, see, to verify that what we, what we scrape is what is actually in the news. So if you look at this uh, on the left, you see um, this selection of a CSS selector for the element with ID, MP, ITN, uh, bold, and anchor tags. Um, this corresponds to um, this div on the HTML page, um, ID, MP, ITN. And within that div, we are looking for the bold tags. Um, where was it? Bold. No, I don't want the pop up. Let's see. Um, this bold tag and this uh, anchor tag. So by querying this MPITN div for any bold tag, uh, any anchor tag, we are then able to get the title and the uh, href of all the links within this div. So we can see here is part one soon. Here is the Kyushu floods. Uh, here's the Russian constitutional referendum, and so on. And we've done so in a handful of lines of code interactively in the M Night REPL 
without any sort of preparation. So I, I wanted the, doc, the data of Wikipedia, I took it and now I have it as a Scala collection that I can, I can work with interactively. So if I want to take it as a tuple, here I have a sequence of tuples that I can work with. Um, the next thing uh, I'm going to look at is, let's, we're going to extend this uh, use case to something else. So the Mozilla Development Network has a very good set of web APIs. Um, you can see that over here we have every, every uh, class that you can access in the browser JavaScript. They have a page with documentation telling you how it works, um, what the name is, what properties it has, and so on. So we are going to use uh, JSOUP to scrape all this data down so we can use it offline. Um, so this is all semi-structured data, which may or may not be complete and may not be in a standard format. But that's the kind of thing that a uh, scraping library like JSOUP is, is very good at. Um, so to begin with, let's say we want to scrape the first paragraph of every subpage linked from the uh, interface, every, all of these interfaces uh, linked from this page. So I want the first paragraph of accelerometer docs. I want the first paragraph of analyzer node docs. Uh, I want the first paragraph of notification docs, and so on. How do we do that? Um, the first thing we need to do is we need to use JSOUP to pull down this first page. So I'm just going to do that right now. Same thing as we did earlier, just with a new URL. Um, then we need to find where all these links are. So these links all live inside this div. Uh, the div doesn't have any ID, but it is two elements after the interfaces header. So we can do dot dot select page two hashtag interfaces hashtag to select by ID. Um, and dot next that gives us the this paragraph here. This is a list of all interfaces. Uh, dot next again that gives us this div with all the list items and um, links inside. And from there, we are able to select the links and do the same thing we did earlier, which is grab their um, title and grab their absolute URL. So, um, so for link in and you do this as Scala, yield uh, link dot title, link the absolute URL. Um, so now we have it. You can see that we have pulled down um, all 974 uh, links that are within this div um, and gotten their metadata for us to use in the Scala REPL. The next thing we want to do is we want to take each of these links and scrape out like the relevant data that we care about. So let's take an example like angle instance arrays. I want the first paragraph of HTML from this page. How do I find that? Um, looking at it in the console, um, it's a matter of um, looking for the article tag with, with ID wiki, wiki article. And then looking for the first direct child, which is a paragraph, and then just grabbing that hello as a string. Um, so I can do that by for link in links. Um, this is like title URL in links. Um, I'm going to now scrape down that URL. Scrape down that URL, uh, and then I want to doc dot select um, article whose ID is wiki article. Um, then that for direct children use a uh, um, carrot use a uh, gr greater than sign. This is the same as the CSS syntax. And I want the first paragraph, which is which is direct child. So as Scala dot head option, because they may, they may not be a paragraph. So I'm going to get a title and the, um, and the paragraph. 
I'm just going to limit it to the first 10 just for simplicity. Um, so, it, so it turned a while, and now we have, um, now we can see the first 10 paragraphs with the, all right, let's use the URL and the title instead of URL and the paragraph rather than the title and the paragraph. So now we can see we have, for every page, we have the first paragraph of documentation from it. Um, some are more, some are less. In some cases, there won't be any documentation. But we, we, where possible, we've grabbed it, and we can use it elsewhere. Maybe we want to take it offline and include it in our IntelliJ autocomplete or integrate it into our editor for some more interactive documentation. Um, and if I want to write this, uh, if I want to write this to a file, it's simply as os.write os pwd slash hello.json uh, and upickle.default.write uh, red17. Um, I think I need to map it to a map it to strings. So map is uh, URL element goes to URL L dot two string. And then now by OS dot read hello dot JSON. You see, I have all this data as JSON. Um, and I can format it more nicely if that's what I want, like indent equals four. Uh, right, overwrite it. Yeah, and you can see just like that, I pulled down the first, the first paragraph of every page on the Mozilla Development Network documentation site and saved it to a JSON file on disk. And now from this JSON file, I could then, in theory, take it and load it anywhere else I want. Doesn't need to be into Scala. I could load into Python, load into JavaScript, and do any further processing. Um, cool. So next, so I think we are at the like 10 minute-ish mark. And we've gone through how to do some simple web scraping in the MNIC Scala REPL. So this isn't really a deep introduction into and deep uh, tutorial of how web scraping works. But rather, this is meant to serve two purposes. One, to show that you can do this kind of useful work interactively in the console. And e even, it, and two, that it may, in fact, be the easiest thing for you to do in that if I wanted to do the similar sort of web scraping in Python, in Ruby, in JavaScript, I may have to spend some amount of time futzing around with third party libraries, pip installing things, wondering why pip is not installing things in the right place. Whereas with Ammonite, I can very conveniently just import the thing into REPL using import ivy, and I immediately get to work. Just start scraping, start using my third party library. No need to do any sort of project setup or package installation. Um, so the next uh, exercise I'm going to walk through is I'm going to do a small GitHub project migration. Um, so I'm going to, so give, let's, Given this existing GitHub project, this request Scala project with a bunch of open issues and a bunch of closed issues, I want to copy all of the issues over to a new GitHub project. Let's call it Lee Howie slash test. Oops. Uh, so it's organized nicely. So for old repository, new repository, if I want to push the Git repository itself, which like the, the commits, the code, it's easy to just do a git pull and git push. But if I wanted to do the copy over the issues and pull requests and other metadata, um, th those live outside the git repository itself. And the only way to access that is either through the browser, which we could access via, um, via JSOUP, or through the GitHub API, which gives it to us in a slightly more structured and slightly more convenient format. Um, so to, <clears throat> to get started with this, the GitHub API um, gives us access to metadata through this uh, URL api.github.com, like slash users slash Lee Howie. Um, and you can see it gives us JSON telling us some metadata about the thing we queried. And we can do this programmatically using the request library that comes bundled with um, the Ammonite Scala repo. So, well, r equals that. And then you can see there's a status code. It has headers, um, it has text, 
and we can shove the text into our JSON library. Uh, UJSON comes bundled with Ammonite as well. And we get a nice um, JSON data structure that we can do things with. For example, we can look, it, we can look things up uh, and turn them into Scala data structures. We can render it with nice indentation and so on. Um, and similarly, apart from request.get, uh, you get you get request dot uh, put post uh, delete and so on. So if I wanted to copy over the issues from the old uh, GitHub project to a new GitHub project, um, GitHub provides APIs for both creating and um, for both creating and reading issues. So in order to create issues, I'm going to need a GitHub token, which I've already uh, set up earlier. So to os.read, os.home, slash github token.txt, uh, .trim. Um, I won't show you the token. Um, and then if you, if you Google how, how, to, uh, how to create an issue on GitHub API, that brings us straight to the documentation to create an issue. Um, so it seems that all I need to do is do a request.post to this API. Instead of users, lihawi, I'm going to do a repo lihawi, repos lihawi, repo is the test repo issues. Um, and then I need to do, let's say, I need to pass in some data. I'm going to pass in just a JSON data structure. So maybe I want title goes to hello, uh, body goes to world. So this, tit this title and body correspond to these, the JSON structure, which has these two keys and, the, and their values. And I need to pass in some, head some authorization headers. So a map of authorization goes to token, token. Uh, I think that looks that looks good. So if I create this, I got a 200 created response, and I refresh this page. You'll see I have a new issue with um, a new issue with a uh, hello title and the uh, world body. Cool. Um, so now we know how to create comments. How do we read comments? So GitHub provides a similar API. There's like fetching issues or listing issues. Um, list the repositories issues. Um, so this is just a matter of doing uh, request.get repo owner target issues. I don't need to pass in any data. I guess I'll just pass in the same uh, authorization token. And then if I, if I uh, JSON form at this nicely, See that this gives me all the metadata for the issues I read. Um, for example, we can see how big it is. In this case, there was one issue in the old repository, in the new repository that I had just created. So um, now that we have, we know how to fetch issues, old issues, and we know how to uh, create new issues, it's straightforward to write a small amount of Scala code in order to fetch all the issues from the old repository and create issues in the new repository. Um, so if I change this to fetch issues from the old repository, instead of test its request Scala, uh, let's call this response, uh, ujson.read response.text dot as an array dot size, you see that it fetched 13 open issues. Um, let's see, what do I want to do now? Is then a mat we can then explore this, um, the, these issues to see what the data we care about is. So, um, so this is a JSON array. Um, every issue has a number, a title, and let's say a user who created it. And for now, let's just stop there. We'll just 
copy over the issues with a number, title, user. And I guess they should have an issue description or body somewhere in here. Um, is there a body? Body, yeah. So there's an issue body as a string. So um, I'm going to parse all the, all the old issues. Val parse equals that. And for, par for data in parse, yield, um, what do I want? I want data title, data body, uh, data number, and I want data uh, user login. Uh, I need to cast this to an array in order to loop over it. Um, so this gives us, this gives it to us as a sequence of JSON values. And I can cast the JSON values to the relevant Scala data type using these small helper functions. Um, so it's, those two are strings is a number. Numbers are by default uh, doubles in JSON. And here I'm just going to call, call them, in, call the integer. This one, last one's a string. And here we have it. I can browse the issues and see that more or less looks like what I would expect. For example, I have this async request and need to launch async request, issue number 36. Uh, user created, this issue was created by user Yang Guang 760. Cool. So now I have the issues. All I need to do is loop over it and post them back to the new, uh, to the new repository. And I will have uh, issue, issues migrated over. Um, so for um, title, body, number, number, user login in issues, I'm going to say print line migrating issue plus number, and then uh, post it. Instead of hello as a title, I'm going to use title as a title. Instead of world as a body, I'm going to use uh, the body followed by the user. I guess I'm going to call original user user login followed by original number uh, number. Let's see format this a bit more nicely. Um, I think this looks good. And now if I start running this, you should see it immediately start migrating the issues over. And as the code gets run on the left, I can see the issues being created on the right. And each new issue has a corresponding, um, has a description which corresponds to the old issue and the user and a number of the old issue in case any, anyone wants to go back to reference it. Um, in this case, I'm migrating issues, but you can easily create comments as well. So if, if I wanted to create a comment, um, GitHub API create comments. Um, where was it? Press API, create issue comment. It's just a matter of posting to this slightly different URL. And we can try it right now. So request.post. Uh, what's different about the URL? Uh, issues, issue number, let's say number 10 for this issue. Um, and then comments. Uh, comments don't have a title. Some, and the body, I'm just going to I am cow here, me move as a body. Um, so I can post this, and I should immediately see the comment appearing on in the browser as a result of the code I just ran in the in the Scala REPL. So we now have um, more or less completed the least of a, a rough issue GitHub issue migration from this old request Scala um, repository to this new Li Hawi test repository. Um, this migration was pretty uh, simplistic. We only migrated open issues. We did, we did not migrate the comments. We did not preserve like any uh, metadata like milestones or labels. But GitHub provides APIs for all of that. And if we want to extend it to support that functionality, to support that fun functionality, it's straightforward to do so. Um, I guess what, what I wanted to demonstrate in this particular case was how easy it was to drive 
third party systems from our Scala REPL. So uh, often when people start using a Scala REPL, people use it to learn Scala. They're fiddling with lists, they're fiddling with arrays, they're fiddling with tuples and for loops and for comprehensions. Uh, less often do I see people using a Scala REPL to work with distributed systems, work with third party services, work with APIs. Um, in the previous example, I showed you how to scrape data from other people's websites using a Scala REPL. This, in this case, I'm showing you how to drive and like, send commands to third party websites also using a Scala REPL. I just need to run a small request.post command here. Um, and immediately, you can see the effect happening on the GitHub website. Um, and all this was done without any sort of extra setup or project, uh, or project uh, build system setup to in order to make this work. I just opened up a vanilla Amnite Scala REPL and used the built-in libraries in order to do these interesting things um, on the GitHub API. And this is, I think, a public repository. So if any of you want to go and take a look, um, it's, you can see it happening in real time. Cool. Uh, so let's go back to the um, let's go back to the slides. So the last thing I'm going to cover is I'm going to do some parallel web crawling. Um, so this is a extremely common interview question. Last time I was looking for a job, I think half of the companies asked me to write a parallel web crawler of some sort. It's absurdly common. Um, and we'll see how to do it in Scala very, very easily. So the, the, gra the graph we are going to crawl is we are going to crawl um, the Wikipedia graph. So if I go to Wikipedia, um, n.wikipedia.org slash, let's say, Scala. Is that not right? Maybe let's try Singapore. Singapore Wikipedia, come on. Okay. Oh, I, need, I was missing the slash wiki uh, path segment. So each Wikipedia article here uh, has several links that go to other Wikipedia articles. Um, so Singapore, for example, is linked to Sovereign. Singapore is linked to Malay Peninsula. Singapore is linked to uh, the South China Sea, and so on. Um, we could scrape this using the Wikipedia, um, using JSOUP and the Wikipedia HTML. But an uh, easier way to get this data in a slightly more structured format is using the Wikipedia API. So Wikipedia also provides a JSON API um, uh, in addition to APIs in many other formats that lets us um, scrape this. So the documentations here, I won't go into too much detail of how the API works, but I have it written down here. So let me just uh, type it out. So if I want to fetch something from Wikipedia, fetch a link of a page from, from the Wikipedia API, like from Singapore, for example, um, title, uh, and let's say I get back a sequence of strings, which is a link. Uh, it's as simple as request.get uh, https n.wikipedia.org wapi.php. Uh, and then you pass in some URL parameters. Um, so action goes to query. Uh, titles goes to the title I'm trying to fetch. The prop or property, I want the links. And the format I want is JSON. Wikipedia also supports other formats like, uh, like um, the XML and other such things. So if I then get the rest.txt, Uh, missing a closing paren, missing a type annotation. Um, so now if I fetch links for Singapore, I get a JSON blob, and I can use JSON.read the JSON blob uh, and render it nicely. Use the browse built in to let me page up and down. Um, and you can see that Wikipedia gives it to us in this format where it's paginated. So, but for now, I'll just ignore the pagination. Uh, there's a query key, a pages key, and then some kind of ID, page ID, I suppose. Within the page ID, I have a links key. 
the links then provides an array of links, each of which has uh, NS, which I'm not sure that stands for, and a title, which is what we want. So from Singapore, if I go to plus six five, uh, you can see this brings me to um, the telephone numbers. If from Singapore, I go to 126 Squadron, Sing Republic of Singapore Air Force, that brings me to Wikipedia page for that uh, Air, for Air Force Squadron. So um, <clears throat> in order to get me to turn this into slightly more pretty data, uh, I can simply write a bit of Scala code to mangle the JSON uh, using the UJSON library, pull out the query, pull out the pages, uh, this gives me a dictionary, so I just get all the values in the dictionary. Uh, and then I want to get the links. And then I want to get every link. And you see the link is an array. And I need to yield uh, the title of that link. Mm. You keep my type, type annotation sequence of strings. Um, so now, if I fetch links from Singapore, <clears throat> um, you can see it gives me the first 10 links. Again, I'm just going to ignore pagination for now. I can fetch links from Scala, I can fetch links from SF, San uh, Francisco, and so on. Um, so again, I'm going to ignore how the Wikipedia API works. Um, we can just assume that this function gives us the outgoing links from a particular Wikipedia page. And we are just going to say, well, given this function, fetch links, how do we write a parallel web crawler? Um, so to do it in se to do write a sequential web crawler, it's relatively straightforward. Um, so I'm just going to call it a fetch all links function with a start title, the string, and a depth of size one, return a set of strings. And it's as simple as performing a breadth-first search over the, over the graph of Wikipedia articles. <clears throat> so for example, a breadth-first search, you need a scene set, which starts off with a start title. Uh, you need a current set, <clears throat> also starts off with a start title. And you could either have a queue or explicit queue to have a first in, first out uh, handling of the pages you see. Or we could have a kind of layer by layer or depth by depth traversal, where I find all the pages of depth one, all the pages of depth two, all the pages of depth three, and so on. So I'm going to do the layer by layer approach because it's marginally simpler. Um, next title list, um, which is, so for every, for every depth that I want to traverse, I will loop over all the current titles, uh, fetch all the links, outgoing from those. Uh, then I'm going to update the current set. Uh, so remove all the things we've already seen. Uh, and then add the current set to the scene set. And then now I just return uh, the scene set. Uh, three times the value should be a var. Not far next title links. Can we spell that? Next title links. Next title links. Uh, lists. Okay, I call li lists in one, links in the other. <coughs> now I can call fetch all links on Singapore. If depth equals zero, this will just print out Singapore. Depth equals one, that'll print out the first 10 links out of Singapore. Depth equals two, that will make a bunch more HTTP requests and print out uh, more links out of Singapore, 84 of them in total. And as I increase the depth, um, as you'd expect, this gets slower and slower. Um, part, part, partly is because I'm fetching more things rather than fetching zero. Uh, URLs, I'm fetching one URL, I'm fetching 84 separate URLs to aggregate the links. But also because I'm fetching them, because I'm fetching them all in parallel, um, I end up ends up taking a lot longer than if I could fetch them. Sorry, because I'm fetching them sequentially, it ends up taking a lot longer than if I had fetched them in parallel. Um, so here it took quite a while, but as in the end I ended up fetching 288 links uh, crawling out 
the Wiki crawling the Wikipedia article graph starting from Singapore uh, to depth of three. So to the easiest way to parallelize this in Scala is to use futures, which come built in in the Scala standard library. Um, so I can import those, import the global execution context, um, and some helper helpers. Um, and it's to convert this uh, fetch all links function into fetch all links parallel function um, is as simple as wrapping the fetch links call in future blocks. Um, we can call this, let's title this futures, and then make next title list equals next title list futures dot map await dot result for forever. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to run these fetch links, func fetch, link, fetch links calls on a background thread pool. Um, by default, by pulling in this, um, the, the default uh, background thread pool, I believe it uses one thread per core on your machine. So on this machine, I have eight virtual cores. I'll do it eight, eight ways parallel. And I'm going to be blocking a thread for every request I make. But for this kind of ad hoc use case, blocking is perfectly fine. I'm running one web crawl here. I'm not running 10,000 concurrent web crawls. Um, so now I can run fetch all links parallel on Singapore depth equals 0, Singapore depth equals 1, Singapore depth equals 2, Singapore depth equals 3. And it should complete much faster, as you see. see it did complete much faster than fetch all links sequential. And if I compare the outcome of fetch all links parallel at depth equals three with the outcome of fetch all links sequential depth equals three, that was res 61. Uh, you'll see that we, are, we got exactly the same results, but it happened much faster because we parallelized it using Scala futures on a background thread pool. Um, so I guess part of the nice thing about Scala futures is how easy they are to get started with for simple parallel parallelization in, 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 a, in a simple like blocking style. So this won't scale to running thousands of concurrent web crawls. But for many use cases, I'm running one web crawl, I'm doing something interactively. And the fact that it doesn't scale to running thousands of things concurrently doesn't really affect me. And if I wanted to optimize it later, for example, if I wanted to import uh, Java's async HTTP client and start doing the web crawling in asynchronous non-blocking fashion, I could trivially do so using the same import dollar IV syntax um, that we had seen earlier to import JSOOP. But ignoring the async concurrency for now, we just by changing two lines of code, we converted our sequential uh, linear web crawl into a parallel breadth-first web crawl that does it layer by layer to fetch all links from going out from a particular Wikipedia article using Wikipedia a API. So <clears throat> that's the demo for parallel web crawling. Um, again, it's simplistic, but it shows that the kinds of things you can do in the Scala REPL with zero setup and almost purely using the REPL, Ammonite REPL built-ins and the Scala standard library. So the UJSON JSON library comes bundled with the Ammonite REPL. The request Scala HTTP library comes bundled with Ammonite Scala REPL. Um, the Scala futures and execution context thread pool comes bundled with the Scala standard library. And that's all you need in order to write, write a parallel HTTP web crawler that crawls the graph of Wikipedia articles over the network. Um, if you had considered doing this in any other language, you want to do this in Python, you want to do this in Java, you want to do this in Ruby or PHP or C Sharp, there'll be a lot more project set up and a lot more boilerplate you need in order to get to the point where we're doing the interesting work of crawling the internet um, interactively, interactively from our uh, REPL. So we covered three things. We covered web scraping, grabbing things off people's websites that they did not necessarily want to grab. We covered a GitHub project migration, um, automating the GitHub API and doing things on GitHub automatically through the Scala REPL. And we did some parallel web crawling which showed us how easy it was to do some concurrent, do, do some simple concurrency and get some real speed ups, all in the, using the Scala standard library in the REPL. Um, 
And I guess the point of this uh, presentation as a whole is to show you how work, working with the Amnite Scala wrapper, you can do the right Scala in this lightweight style without needing any of those heavyweight frameworks that you may be familiar with uh, writing backend code. Um, so if you're writing a big, big serious business backend service, it makes sense to use a serious business backend framework like uh, Fineg Finagle or Finatra or Akka or Play or HTTP4S, any of those other big frameworks, because your serious backend service demand has many serious requirements and could make use of these serious frameworks. However, not everyone's work is doing serious backend services. Often you just want to do a one-off query, do some one-off automation, do some one-off uh, scraping. And I hope that in this presentation, I've demonstrated that you can do these one-off things using Scala in the MNET Scala REPL, perhaps even more easily than any other language you could come up with. Even that web scraping with Scala in the REPL is easier than web scraping in Python, in the Python REPL on Python scripts. That doing GitHub API automation from the M Night Scala REPL is easier than GitHub API automation from, it, let's say, JavaScript scripts or using Bash scripts and curl. Um, and at Scala is not only a good language for writing big, serious business backend services, but Scala is also a great language for doing this kind of interactive development and exploratory work interactively in the Scala REPL. So um, I covered these things in the interest of time to a pretty shallow level. Um, the, the book I wrote, Hands-On Scala Programming, covers, the, covers them somewhat more deeply and gives a more thorough um, explanation of how what you can do with the Scala REPL. So for example, um, web scraping, we go into more detail. The GitHub project migration, the book shows you how to migrate comments over from the old uh, issue tracker to a new issue tracker. In, for parallel web crawling, the book also introduces how to do asynchronous parallel web crawling using uh, Java's async HTTP client, but also in a very straightforward way, allowing you to do thousands of concurrent HTTP requests, all from the comfort of your Scala REPL. Um, so if you like the presentation, you want more of it, check out the book. Uh, there's a discount code, SF Scala, you get 20% off uh, for it, if you want to buy the book in the next week. Um, yeah, and otherwise, I hope you like the presentation, and I'll take any questions in the um, Hangout if there are any. Cool. Uh, the the bird sounded that bird sounded like a child. Yeah. <laughs> um, so missed future traverse opportunity. Um, yeah, future not traverse is mostly useful if you're doing non-blocking asynchronous work with futures. Uh, if, you're, if you don't mind blocking because you're not doing anything at massive scale, and in this case, in the REPL, I'm not doing anything at massive scale, just using, just using a for loop and the weight dot result, as I show here on the left, is perfectly fine for these like small scale one-off scripts or one-off commands. If you want to run a thousand uh, web crawls in parallel, then sure, you, need, you, you want to use future.traverse. Um, can import IV be done in the Scala REPL? Uh, nope, uh, Info IV is currently only supported the Ammonite REPL. Um, I think there may be plans to backport it to a Scala REPL, but that's on the Scala team when they want, how and when they want to do that. Um, but Ammonite is free and open source and available on every operating system, so I don't see any reason why you'd want to use a Scala REPL. Um, for example, Ammonite provides things like multi-line editing, which a Scala REPL, I, at least up until recently, did not provide. More recently, they upgraded their version of jail, of the JLine console library, so they may provide multi-line editing, other things as well. Uh, any other questions? Let me scroll down. Uh, this standard REPL feature in M9, 2x conservative, enter to abort the current open command. Oh, uh, you can use control C, M9, control C doesn't abort the REPL, which was actually the first the first feature I wanted to get into Ammonite was Control C not aborting the REPL. If you look at the Scala issue tracker, there's a really old pull request to try and port this to the Scala REPL, but the Scala REPL is a lot of uh, legacy that makes it a bit hard to Im implement there. Could Ammonite be used as an alternative to Spark Shell? Um, I believe it can, but I'm not the expert there. So I think Al Alex Arkenbolt from the Scala Center has done some work uh, integrating Ammonite into Spark Shell. Um, and they use the, he has his own like Almond Scala notebooks, which 
are, are built on Ammonite and do have support for Spark and other useful like big data platforms. I think they do like uh, Flink and other things as well. Um, but you, you, you'll have to ask on the channel and see if anyone else is using it. Um, I, I'm not personally familiar. Um, any other questions? <clears throat> Cool. If there aren't any other questions, um, actually, yeah. I have one question. I uh, go for it. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm wondering whether the design of a library, um, in other words, like object-oriented libraries versus more functional style library, yep. Whether that, the you know, using REPL, whether one or the other approach makes it easier to use in the REPL. Uh. My my personal impression is that it's purely a matter of familiarity. Um, so it's whatever you're familiar with. If you're used to banging out the code in IntelliJ or in VS Code, you'll be just as comfortable banging it out in the REPL. And whether it's object-oriented or functional doesn't really make a difference. Um, like I, for example, I don't use Cats or Scala Z at all, but many of those Cats and Scala Z folks, they do use Ammonite heavily, and they, they seem perfectly comfortable in it as well. So I, I don't think it makes a big difference. Um, OK. Yeah. Uh, Chad Self says, I always forget the syntax of import IV. Um, let's see, I think import IV is autocomplete. Let's see if that still works. So com.lihari.request, hold on, request. I thought it had autocomplete, but maybe it's not working now. S Scala. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I guess the syntax for import IV is basically the same as the mill import syntax, um, which is also basically the same as the, uh, what you might call it, as the Gradle import syntax. So any of you who are using Gradle, um, so it's basically the name, the organization, the package name and the version supported by colons. Um, and for Scala libraries, it's double colons, just like how for SVT is double percentage for Scala libraries. Um, I think there should be autocomplete. Why is there no autocomplete here? Uh, oh yeah, so there is autocomplete. So um, if, you, if you get the syntax right and don't forget to put the dot and you can autocomplete the libraries you're pulling in. Um, and autocomplete the versions of the libraries to see what version you want to pull in. Um, so that should that that may help a bit. It's kind of clunky because it needs to do this Maven resolution every time you, it does autocomplete. But it may be easier than going to like search.maven.org and like searching for the library you want. Yeah, like going is a bit clunky having to go all the way here. Um, so autocomplete does help a bit. Um, are many teams using Ammonite for Scala scripting for automation purposes? Uh, I use it in a number of places. It's nice for doing things that are hard to do in Python, like concurrency, like XML handling, because Scala XML is built in, uh, like requests and JSON, because we don't need to fiddle with pip installs. Pip installs are always a bit of a nightmare in production, just because trying, trying to get them consistent across all your machines. Um, but I can't speak for other teams. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, Alexi says the uh, CFP for Scala by the Bay is extended to July 31st. So submit the talk for November. Cool. I guess if there are no other questions, thanks, Alexi and, and Sarah for having me. Um, and thanks, everyone, for coming. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Yeah. and. I'll see thanks, you Leo, online. Thanks, yeah. Howie. And check, check out Thank my book. And come by the Gitter channels if you have any questions about Ammonite requests, you pickle you JSON and whatever. Cool. See you all. No, th 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 thank you, yeah. Howie. Really appreciate the talk. It was fantastic. Yeah. A round of applause for Howie. Awesome talk. Yeah. Yeah, it was fantastic. And Alexi, any closing words from you before I wrap up? 
Uh, just what I uh, said and uh, how he mentioned, uh, we have uh, awesome skill by, by the way this year, we add uh, Reactive Summit, which used to be a uh, light band conference. Now uh, it is a conference of Reactive Foundation, uh, which I'm recently a uh, general manager. So this is a Linux Foundation day. And so Reactive uh, talks, which are generally cloud native applications, so anything to create uh, distributed systems easier for developers uh, are going there, right? So what we used to have, basically soup to nuts, kind of Linkerd, data pipelines, uh, microservices, uh, mesh, mesh systems, everything is going to reactive track. Uh, please submit a talk. I think it's going to be awesome. It's, we probably will do it online with maybe thousands of people, right, easily. So uh, this year is unusual. We want to make the best of this. Uh, submit a talk, you can get exposure to thousands of people and we'll always welcome new speakers and old speakers. Uh, CFP is open until end of July. Scale when when are you going to announce the speakers uh, after the, 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 the deadline? Or you don't yeah, we, we, hope, we hope to do it quickly the early August. It's It's been a, a little bit extended, right? But I think we're going to end up with a good program. So if you submit a talk, uh, there's a high chance it will be accepted. Uh, if you didn't submit a talk yet, submit it, please. Great. Uh, bit of uh, the other news is uh, we're looking for speaker for August for SF Scala. So please get in touch via Slack or any other means you can get a hold of me if you want to do a talk in uh, August. And our next meetup is on that SF Scala themselves are our, ourselves are hosting or is on July 30th. Uh, have a look at our meetup page for details of that. And um, apologies for those who ended up with the wrong Google Meets link. I have no idea why, why it changed. Next time, 30 minutes before the meetup, I'll, I'll compare the URLs, make sure it hasn't changed on, on me. And I hope everyone enjoyed it. And uh, we can continue the hallway conversations on Slack if everyone wants to continue talking. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Otherwise, I, uh, bye, everyone. Thanks, Lars. Thanks, Alexi. Thanks. Uh, excuse me. Will there be any recorded video available? I had a meeting, so I missed that. You know, beginning. Half there, will an be. hour. There, there, there will be. It will be uploaded to functional.tv. If you go to functional.tv URL, it'll be uploaded there, and uh, on I'll, I'll, I'll announce it on Slack when it's available. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Ciao. Thank you.